Additionally, plays is very tough, and Irk, they've got a, you see a bunch of guys out there that uh, I noticed you were taking some notes just a moment ago on uh, receivers. At times, they'll use five receivers, uh, wide receivers in the game at the same time, and I was just uh, <laughs> trying to note those numbers and see how it tabbed with uh, what we had thought they might do. They'll, uh, they'll, uh, they'll line up with the quarterback in a shotgun and, and five wide receivers out there, no backs, and uh, that's something that we we haven't seen uh, except in practice and I'm afraid we can't impersonate Central Florida as well as they can execute. Speaking of which uh, we have been in a scoring contest with these guys for the last uh, three or four ball games that we played against them. We can't afford to get much of a scoring contest these days can we? No we really can't. That doesn't seem to be our personality this year. We really do need to open up our offense, uh, leave off the mistakes and if we can leave off the mistakes, I believe we can score some points. We've been killing ourselves. Uh, the defense has been playing hard. The offense has been playing hard. Uh, this is going to be a different kind of game for our defense today, I believe, because the, the teams that we've played so far have been more run-oriented. And uh, this team, unless they change an awful lot from their first three games, is uh, going to put the ball up 35 to 55 times. I know Joe Ross has uh, still got a bit of a, an ankle problem. I know it's nothing serious, uh, but uh, Gary Miller came in last week, and traditionally he's performed very well off the bench. He has done that, and uh, he's going to start the game today. I'm not sure that Joe is ready to play. I'd rather not use him and, and get him hurt or get his ankle stung again uh, with the hope that uh, he can get well in another week's, uh, with another week's rest. However, he's, he's not moving around badly, and... Uh, the situation demands he might be in there. We've got some football weather. It looks like wind could be a factor. It's blowing in pretty strong from the Lupton building here. This is the strongest wind I believe that we've ever encountered out here. Uh, we usually have a breeze, but this is uh, this is really a wind, and it's definitely going to be a factor in the game. All right, how do the boys feel? I think our guys feel pretty good. They've had a good week's practice. They say war and peace. If the Hundred Years' War is your favorite time of history, if you've got so much patience you're waiting for Hollywood to come out with Ishtar 2, then yesterday's marathon at Paulson Stadium would have had you delirious. The Eagles scored the first time they got their hands on the football. Quarterback Ken Burnett brought the second largest crowd in Paulson Stadium history to its collective feet by scrambling on this 28-yard run to set it up. Burnett then pitched to Frank Johnson on the next play and got us eight yards closer to the goal line. On the 12th play of the drive, Burnett called his own number once more and went in untouched from 10 yards out, and the Eagles were up 7-0, and there were high fives all around. Following the kickoff, James Wildman Carter came up with only the second safety that the Eagles have mustered since restarting football, the last one way back in 1982, when Wildman dropped UCF quarterback Darren Slack in his own end zone. Southern's next drive ran out of gas in a hurry, but Tim Foley came in for a 54-yard field goal, and it was dead solid perfect, setting a new Paulson Stadium record and tying Tim's own career record set two years ago at UT Chattanooga. Southern was cruising 12 to nothing. But Central Florida's offense came to life like gangbusters. Darren Slack hitting Arnell Spencer, who took off in full stride for 32 yards. And the ball was bouncing the night's way yesterday as Slack managed to slip out of this mess for a nine-yard pickup, drop the football, but only his teammates were around to cover. And that was costly for the Eagles, for on the next play it was 12-7 when Slack fired the final 14 yards to Bernard Ford in the end zone. Two possessions later, however, the Eagles looked like they were going to take complete command, even though the three-play drive didn't get off to what looked like a promising start. But Burnett noticed something, changed a play at the line of scrimmage, and fired to a streaking Ross Warsham down the right sidelines. The defender missed, and Ross was touchdown bound. The Eagles were up 18-7. Burnett tried to hit Frank Johnson for a two-point conversion pass, but the attempt failed, and the score remained 18-7. Still, it hardly seemed to matter because the Southern defense continued to perform admirably, tossing slack for a 10-yard loss, and the Knights later had to punt. Credit Jeff Banks with this slack sack. And after a semi-awful punt, the Eagle Express was right back in business at the UCF 26. It took the Eagles one whole play to score on their next drive as Burnett tossed his second TD pass of the afternoon, to say nothing of the first quarter, to Tony Belzer. In less than 15 minutes, Burnett had passed for two touchdowns and run for another. Look quick. 
because here it comes again, and the Eagles were soaring 25 to 7, which is how the long, long first quarter ended. Even the second quarter started out well for the Eagles. After the Knights missed a field goal, Burnett rolled out for an eight yard gain on a second and 11 situation. Then Ross Warsham was the target again. He got 13 more for the Eagles up to midfield. Then things started falling apart. Burnett's pitch to Ernest Thompson bounced off his helmet. UCF got it back, but they couldn't take advantage of the situation. What they did take advantage of was a new punter, Terry Harbin, who never got this one away. The scramble was on. Keenan Wembley finally came up with it, and it was clear sailing to the end zone. And just like that, it was 25-13 Southern. The Knights also missed a two-point conversion. The Eagle Express, however, showed no signs of slowing down. As Burnett pitched to Frank Johnson, he hit the right end for 11 yards. But with a fourth and one situation coming up, a pass to Johnson was batted harmlessly to the turf, and UCF had the ball back. Then something weird. On the last play of this long, long first half, Slack couldn't find a receiver and took off. When the run was over, the clock on the wall said the half was also. But the Eagles were penalized for holding up field, and UCF got one more play. So Ed O'Brien came on and drilled a 36-yarder to close the gap to nine points, 25-16 at intermission. Meet a couple of chance. Take the case of Georgia Southern Eagles' Daryl Chandler and Gary Miller. Both have performed admirably this season after performing mostly in the shadows over the past couple of years. Last year, after struggling with South Carolina State for three quarters, Gary Miller, playing behind Gerald Harris, broke through the Bulldog defense for a big score late in the game that gave the Eagles a 14-7 lead and the spark they needed to go on to victory. Darren, on the other hand, has been on the receiving end of some passes this year and done an outstanding job with downfield blocking for which split ends get little credit. Free play, tailback Robert Ector zipped through the Eagle defenders for 17 yards and a first down up to the 33. But after that, the teams exchanged punts twice, almost. The second time for Georgia Southern, Terry Harvin couldn't hold onto the ball. And as usual yesterday, the only color jerseys around it were white. On second and 14, Darren Slack, who was anything but, Slack that is, hit wide receiver Bernard Ford for a 28-yard gain through the air and a first down at the Southern 11. But Southern's defense rose to the occasion again. On third and two from the three, Slack's pass into the end zone was beautifully broken up by Nay Young. Bernard Ford was looking around desperately for an interference call, but it wasn't coming. And the Knights had to settle for a 21-yard field goal. GSC's lead had been cut to 25-19. But the next time the Knights got the ball, they took the lead. Another of Slack's 58 passes for the day hit Bernard Ford for 18 yards. And although this next pass into the flats was incomplete, UCF got 12 yards out of the deal for what the official said was a personal foul on Terry Young. Another typical great play by Terry's older brother, Nay, prevented a touchdown as he broke up this pass in the deep corner of the end zone. Nay wished he'd intercepted. And two plays later, so did about 15,000 others on hand. When Slack hit tight end Don Grayson down the middle for a touchdown and a 26-25 advantage. And that was the score as we headed for the fourth period. But the final stanza began with a bang as Tony Belzer electrified the crowd, which more or less had resembled props through the third period, nearly running this one back all the way. Still a 41-yard return to the UCF 29. On the first play from scrimmage in the period, substitute quarterback Raymond Gross came off the bench and gave the crowd another dose of vitamin B12 with a 29-yard run to glory, bringing back memories of you-know-who. Raymond admitted he was running scared, but he got the job done and afterwards said about replacing Burnett. Well, uh, I don't know what the decision was, what made him change. And, you know, it made my job a little easier when everything went right, so... I'm glad everything happened the way it was supposed to and we got the job done. Scored a big touchdown there. Yeah, it was great. It was my first, and I hope there's a whole lot more. Were you faking on that one? <laughs> were you just uh, trying to make up things as they went along? Well, but I'm, I, I was a scared runner. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you're scared, you try to avoid everything else, and, and that seems to be my best <laughs> thing, so. On their next possession, from deep in their own territory, Bernard Ford tossed a halfback option pass 35 yards downfield to Arnell Spencer. It was a beauty up to the 46. On second and 10, however, Terry Young brought the Knights' drive to a halt with this interception. It was at this point, history tells us, that the winning drive began. Raymond Gross for 14, up to the 42. 
And on second and 10, it was a case of how did he do that? On a roll out to the left, Raymond is going to pitch to Ernest Thompson while falling flat on his face. And the Eagles got nine yards out of the deal. Tony Belzer was the target on the next play as Gross scrambled out of trouble and fired a wobbly but effective pass down to Tony at the enemy 23. Three plays later, Tim Foley booted the winning points from 35 yards away. The Knights, however, came right back, and with 5.24 to go, Robert Ector bowled his way in from two yards out to cut the margin to two, 34-32 Eagles. But on a two-point conversion play, victory was preserved for the moment when Ken Butler came blowing through to slack sack in his tracks. But victory seemed very distant until Slack undershot his receiver on this play, and Calvin Robinson made a beautiful shoestring interception for the Eagles. UCF did get one more crack at it, believe it or not, Ripley, but with six seconds to go, Slack's pass was nowhere close. Another routine victory for the Eagles. Irks 50 at the... Been victory. talking about buying lights, and now I know. Uh, what was it, three and a half hours? At least. I believe it was the longest game I can ever remember. All day... It it seemed to me that we were playing in the twilight zone. It was such an unusual game. We played so well in the first quarter and then just kind of stopped. Uh, there no huddle offense, uh, 58 passes, I believe, uh, a scoreboard lighting up. It was a very, very different game. Uh, I'm glad we had the 34 and they had the 32, but you know, they could have easily Without JoJo's interception, they could have uh, kicked that last second field goal. And I would be standing here and I wouldn't be smiling like this. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you can say about our games of Central Florida, my gosh, they sure are not dull. We kept the folks on the seats today. How about East Carolina, Middle Tennessee, and Florida a and uh, our The biggest margin has been four points. So it looks like we're destined to to uh, at least try to assassinate ourselves. We, uh, we still fumble. We, we make good plays and have them negated by penalties. There were an awful lot of yellow flags out there, and I'm sure they were all very well deserved. But gosh, I wish we could get ourselves on track both ways and not have those penalties, not have the turnovers that uh, have been hurting us so badly. New punter today, um, putting in a new quarterback about halfway through. Um, what are your assessments? Well, I thought our punter punted the ball when he had an opportunity very well. Uh, they just, they, they flooded in on him that first time. I, I'm not sure he had a chance to get the ball away. Uh, he handled a low snap and couldn't kick it again and I thought perhaps he could have handled that situation better. But uh, he deserved a chance to, to be our punter, and uh, I think he showed us that he has some ability. Uh, Raymond Gross, I thought, showed us that he's got the quick feet and the ability to make a big play, and we need that big play. We got a couple in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, the pass by Snake was a check off by him, which was a very good check. He hit him on the boundary. Their corner missed a tackle, and, and he scored an easy touchdown for us. Reminded me of some things that we had done the last couple of years. <laughs> but uh, then we settled back into that, uh, I'm going to make mistakes and help you all for a while. It was a heck of a game, wasn't it? It really was. OK, three weeks on the road before we come back to the friendly confines here. Well, that's just the way it is. I uh, wish we didn't have to go on the road. It's nice to play here, and it's nice to win. We evidently have a little better chance to win here. but. Uh, We've got what we've got. We're now three and two, our heads above the water a little bit uh, with another opportunity to play. And that's all we ever ask is a chance to play one more tag. Well, at least we got the Gator Bowl. That's right. We do have, uh, unless somebody changes things in the meantime. <laughs> okay, well, good luck, Eric. We'll see Thank you next you, week. All righty.